last year when I get my auto insurance, they said, do you want six months or a year? And and I knew at that time, I'm like, lock me in for a year. Do not change my rate for a whole year. And I'm really glad I thought that at that time, because man, this is the fastest yearly rate on record. Auto insurance premiums are skyrocketing. Just what you wanted to hear to start your Monday morning commute, I'm sure. Auto insurance premiums are skyrocketing. What's to blame? High auto insurance premiums are fanning the flames of inflation. Dude, like I, I legitimately do not know how much more it's going to be, but I'm expecting 20% increase, right? At least, maybe more. I drive a Tesla, and for some reason, they've decided that Tesla is... Tesla once was the darling of the auto industry, has now become like the the scapegoat of the auto industry, right? They're wanting to say how how uh, every time you turn on an EV, it catches on fire. Every time you turn on an EV, it mows down pedestrians. Every time you turn on an EV, um, you know, a, a koala bear um, in Australia like falls off a tree or something stupid like that. There's always smear campaigns against Teslas. And lately, I have seen Tesla insurances are going up higher and higher. And you know what? It's just the cost of driving it, I suppose. I'm saving a buttload of money on gas every week, so I suppose I'll make it up there. Surging auto insurance premiums are fanning the flames of high inflation and keeping the financial pressure on millions of U.S. households. I have the privilege of working with a lot of financial institutions, consulting with them. Ones in Louisiana were telling me that um, on their home insurance, not necessarily autos, but their home insurance premiums are now more expensive than the mortgages that people are trying to take out. Could you imagine? You're paying more every month in insurance than you are for your mortgage. You're paying more every month in insurance that's going to evaporate if you don't use it. Like it just goes into thin air if you don't use it. That's not the way insurance is supposed to be. Insurance is supposed to be you pay a tiny amount, it goes into a pool, and then when someone needs it, it pays out. It's not, you pay a buttload and you don't ever use it and then we aren't gonna pay you out anyway if you do need it, right? That's how it feels these days, right? They wanna just uh, tax and tax and tax with the insurance and then, when you want it, eh, we're not going to pay so much on it. No. The cost of auto insurance rose 2.6% in March, bringing the total annual gain to 22.2%. Last year, when I did uh, get my auto insurance, they said, do you want six months or a year? And, and I knew at that time, I'm like, lock me in for a year. Do not change my rate for a whole year. And I'm really glad I thought that at that time, because man, this is the fastest yearly rate on record. When compared with the beginning of 2021, the inflation crisis began. Motor vehicle insurance is more more than 50% more expensive. Jeez Louise. Now, I used to work in a State Farm agent's office back when I was going to grad school to get my MBA. And I also worked in the headquarters of a different uh, insurance office in Dallas. And I couldn't imagine the phone calls that they're getting every single day in, uh, in the agent's offices, right? Imagine, right? You're sitting there minding your business every day customer after customer after customer. Why did you raise my rate? I didn't have an accident. Why did you raise my rate? How could you do this to me? I've been a loyal customer for 10 years, over and over and over all day long. And what, what can the people in the agent's office say? I'm sorry, everybody's getting their autos raised, right? Like that doesn't feel great from a customer perspective to be told, sorry, it's nothing I can do about it. You're just going to have to pay more. That sucks. That's the fastest way to run your customers right out the door. With with car insurance, it's something that's been building up for a while now, this person told Fox Business. Car insurance tends to be very reactionary, so in the past few years, the industry has experienced lots of losses during a time when inflation has caused the cost of vehicle parts and different product and repair costs to increase. In 2023, the average U.S. rate for full insurance surged to $2,019, a 24% increase from 2022 and a 29% jump from the previous year. That amounts to roughly 3.4% of the median household income. Even a bare bones policy climbed to $1,100 per year. The national average of car insurance hit $2,314 per year for full coverage as of April. This amounts to $193 a month for full coverage per car, per car, man. Several factors caused the spike in car, price, uh, car insurance prices. New and auto car, new, the price of new and auto, New and used auto, good gravy, Chris, le learn to read. The price of new and used cars rose sharply after COVID, the result of both supply chain disruptions and unseasonably high demand. As a result, vehicles are more expensive and costlier to replace, which has driven up the price of repairs, right? Dude, we have seen this. I think the auto industry is set to be destroyed. When, when people want a truck at the average price, this, I, I saw the stat the other day, it blew my mind. The average price 
of a Dodge Ram was $79,000 for a Dodge Ram. The average transaction price for a Dodge Ram was $79,000. It wasn't all long ago. You could get like four <laughs> Dodge Rams for $79,000. That is astronomically expensive. Like you, you could get, I mean, still, you could get a really nice Lexus for $79,000. I mean, you could get a really almost top of the line Lexus on the whole floor for $79,000. How are trucks so expensive, right? And as you've as you've heard me talk about Tesla's already, I think Tesla is a canary in the coal mine, dropping their prices as much as they have to capture market share, and it totally worked. The Model 3 was the uh, best-selling car in the world for 2023, and it wasn't even close. I could buy almost two, maybe two Model 3, Model Ys, depending on the uh, the the configuration for one Dodge Ram. And I'll surely get a hell of a lot better gas mileage. But the real problem here is car prices have just astronomically risen. And that's what they're saying in this article. Is they've gone up so much that to replace and repair the cars, all of that has gone up so much. So inflation is just hitting from every different angle. And if you thought you could get away with it in your car insurance, oh no. I remember when I did work in, in car insurance, I specifically would tell people this line. It was a total sales technique, but it totally worked and it still holds true today. The car insurance you're getting today is the cheapest it will ever be. And it's kind of a sick thought to think about because your car is going down in value. Your insurance is going to pay you less every day that you own it. A year from now, it's going to be quite a lot less, many percentage points less. But yet your car insurance premium is either going to be at or higher in price than it is today. And like I'd say, I had tell people this all the time, you know, get it today. This will be the cheapest you will ever have it. How does that make sense? When the car value goes down, yet you're paying as much or more in car insurance every month. I don't know. It beats me. But I know that there are a lot of people who are making a lot of money on car insurance right now. Speaking of Warren Buffett, people who are making a lot of money in car insurance. I don't know if you know this, but Berkshire Hathaway actually has a very large hand in uh, insurance. Right. And we actually are seeing on Outlier a buy signal for Berkshire Hathaway on April 2nd. So Berkshire Hathaway got a buy signal on April 2nd. And it wouldn't surprise me at all with uh, inflation continuing to go up. Insurance is probably one of the most lucrative businesses you could be in right now. That's probably why the guy at the, the Oracle of Omaha is there right now. And looking at the performance summary here, you can see Outlier showing a 63.2% return following these buy and sell signals that you see on your screen right there. So if you want to get access to these signals just like this, be sure to head over to OVTLYR.com right now to see what outliers win. Now let's go take a look at what the internet says here. Insurance is the new luxury item. It's no longer a have to have, it's a luxury item. Many Americans are no longer able to buy cars because they cannot afford the insurance. The cost of auto insurance is written by a massive 22% last year. This is the biggest one year jump in insurance premium since the 70s. Meanwhile, average new car loans are now at the interest rate on new car loans is now at 9%. Used car loans are above 12%. The average car payment is now a record $738 a month. Car ownership is more expensive than ever. Man, when are we ever going to get a break? Right? Insurance is going up, interest rates are going up, cost of everything's going up. When are we going to get a break? Dear Lord Jesus, send us a break. <laughs> That's what I think. Insurance sticker shock sets in. Auto insurance premiums, new and used vehicle prices, new vehicle prices, and used vehicle price. Oh, combined on the blue. Okay. You can see, right? Um, new vehicle prices, used vehicle prices. Uh, oh, they've come down since they're, they're uh, the crazy high, right? It's got to be percentage change it has to be percentage change right it's not like it's a an actual dollar value yeah it's got to be percentage change so starting in 2019 you can see the percentage change how much it's gone up or how much it's gone down the percentage change in autos has actually come down it's still higher than it was uh at this point here but um the auto insurance you can see has been a, a very steady rise insurance premiums for just about everything have skyrocketed since 2020 if you factor in insurance and taxes the average monthly home payment is around oh, over three thousand dollars a month Insurance is quickly becoming a luxury. I've heard analysts that were surprised that auto insurance premiums exploded 22% yearly, citing that car prices are decreasing. I think it's pretty easy to understand why premiums are going up. Insurance companies, like many banks, are full of bonds yielding 2% that, if marked to market, would create a big hole in their balance sheet. I wonder why politicians have not said anything about the insurance. Wow. Okay. 
I did not realize this. This is actually a huge. I'm going to have to give that a like. This is a huge revelation to me. Insurance companies, like many banks, are full of bonds yielding 2%, if that, mark to market. So one of the huge issues with Silicon Valley Bank and these other bank failures that have happened, and more will be coming, mark my words, is that they were chasing yield. Because they were chasing yield um, over the last few years, they, they would go, I don't know, 45 basis points higher, but yet take a security that would have been two or three years in duration and make it 20 or 30 years in duration for 45 extra basis points. And now what would have been, let's call it 3%, they got 345. Let's round it up to 350. Now, if they need the funds to satisfy member or depositor demands, if they need to liquidate those funds to uh, pay back somebody who wants to take their cash out, they're going to take a huge loss on it. And I had not realized that that's probably what's happening in the insurance industry as well. So, oof, that is, uh, that is definitely something to keep our eye on. So hopefully, hopefully this gets resolved. I, man, it just, I love covering the economy. I love covering all this kind of stuff, but it just gets so frustrating when it's one after another story after story of how, uh, how bad and how, how things just continue to get worse, right? How are we ever going to fight back? Let me know in the comments what you think. How are we ever going to fight back on this inflation? So be sure to click one of the two videos that YouTube's showing you right now. It thinks you're going to love those and continue to watch more. Thank you so much for tuning in today's Outlier Live. I'll see you on the next episode.